Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast special edition series where I preview and predict um, each team's season or how it's going to play out. And this is going to be the 19th of 30 shows in terms of the teams. And next up is the New York Yankees. Um, We'll do the top 30 prospect list. We'll do the superlatives. We'll do futures and then a bold prediction at the end. So next up is the Yankees. Um, Their top prospect, Jason Dominguez. He was up last year. He got surgery. So he is going to be out until the All-Star break, maybe after that. So he had Tommy John. And overall, on MLB.com, he's 41st. Number two is Spencer Jones. He's another outfielder. ZTA 2025. Everybody loves Spencer Jones. Yankees refuse to include him in any trades. He's 84th overall on MLB.com. Three is Roderick Arias. He's a shortstop. He's ZTA 2027. He is 86th overall on MLB.com. He's made a nice rise. Four, Chase Hampton, righty. His ETA is this year, but still have to start in double A, like um, Spencer Jones is, but Spencer Jones is 2025. That's the difference between the two. And Hampton is 92 overall on MLB.com. Um, five, Austin Wells, catcher. He was up last year's ETAs this year. Emerson Pereira, outfield. He played a little last year. He's going to start in AAA. Um, his ETAs this year. Seven, George Lombard Jr., shortstop, 2027 ETA. Eight, Will Warren, righty, ETA this year. Nine, Henry Lalane, lefty, 2027. Ten, Brando Maya, outfield, 2028. 11. Brock Selvage, lefty, 2026. 12. Kyle Carr, lefty, 2026. 13. Ben Rice, catcher first base, 2024. 14. Clayton Beater, righty, 2024. 15. Francisco Valorio, outfield, 2029. 16. Jorbit Vivas, second base, third base, 2024. 17. Carlos Legrange, righty, 2027. 18. Yuandres Gomez, righty, 2024. 19. Rock Riggio, second base, 2026. 20. Jared Serna, middle infield, 2026. 21. Kiner Delgado, middle infield, 2027. 22. Augustin Ramirez, catcher, 2026. 23. Zach Messenger, righty, 2025. 24. Tristan Verling, righty, 2026. 25, Kate Smith, righty, 2026. 26, Jack Neely, righty, 2024. 27, Tyler Hardman, third base, 2024. 28, Anthony Hall, outfield, 2026. 29, Danny Watson, righty, 2024. And 30, Justin Lang, righty, 2026. All right. Rookie impact, I'm going to say Austin Wells. I mean, I wanted to say Jason Dominguez, obviously. Um, but I'm going to say their best rookie is Austin Wells. I think he'll eventually start um, taking over, starting duties at catcher over Jose Trevino. And Austin Wells will um, become a household name in Yankee land this season. So I'm going to say Austin Wells over Jason Dominguez, although it's close. Most improved player on the Yankees, this is easy. It's Anthony Volpe. I thought he was kind of disappointing as a rookie, especially in the first half of the year. But in the second half of the year, he was good. And he actually um, was a gold glove um, award, eighth in rookie of the year. But that's because he's on the Yankees. That's why he's, he was eighth in rookie of the year. Um, second half of the year, he was good. But um, I think he's going to be even better this year. And... I think that'll be a reason for the Yankees to bounce back after a dismal year last year. Um, most disappointing. Um, this is an interesting one. This obviously goes to... Um, I usually pick for this somebody who had the career year the year prior and then takes a step back. Or if somebody gets a big tr- contract and... Um, falls on their face. I gotta be honest, this is a a little bit of a hard one, but I'm gonna say Marcus Stroman. And it's kind of a default answer because it's usually the free agent pickup that usually is a flop. 
So I'm going to say Marcus Stroman for most disappointing. Make or break person on the Yankees. Um, Glaber Torres, in a weird way to me, is make or break. Only because the Yankees haven't extended him yet. He's going to be a free agent after um, the end of the season. Um, so... I won't be shocked if um if he's bad, they just move on. Meaning not up to expectations. Um bounce back player, um there's a couple I could go with here in terms of bounce back, um guys that are coming off injury, bad years or whatever. I'm gonna say Carlos Rodon. Um I know it's an obvious answer, but it better be Carlos Rodon. And what do I f- define as bounce back for Carlos Rodon? Because of how bad he was. I'm going to say ERA under 3.7. Or dare I say 3.5. If he has an ERA like 3.3, he has a couple of shaky starts and a lot of really good starts. Fine. I mean, he doesn't have to get a Cy Young vote for crying out loud. But just be a competent number two or number three starter, depending on how the season goes. So I'm going to say Carlos Rodon, but that's a default answer. Um, although Nestor Cortez is also a really good one as well. So um, I'm actually going to change it to Nestor Cortez because I just forgot that he was sitting there. But I do think... Um, Rodon will bounce back, but I think that Cortez, from an injury standpoint, will bounce back as well. So my pick to bounce back is Nestor Cortez. I think he'll have an ERA potentially under three. But I think Carlos Rodon will bounce back too. So the Yankees, I have two picks, but my actual picks will be Cortez, although Rodon has to, in my opinion. Um, Ewing theory for the Yankees. Um... So, there's a player, I'm trying to think of who left the team, or who's not on the team anymore. Harrison Bader? I mean, he was on the team that made the ALCS a couple years ago. They got swept by the Astros. Chapman's been off the team for a while. Um, I mean, I hate to say this because... I'm a Yankees fan, and I'm a a big fan of this pitcher. But what if they're in first place without Garrett Cole for six weeks of the season, and the Orioles regress, and the Blue Jays aren't as good, and the Rays obviously regress? I mean, could Garrett Cole be the Ewing theory for the first six weeks of the season? I hate to say it because I love Garrett Cole. But I think that's a, a decent answer for the Ewing theory question. Um, so from an injury standpoint, Garrett Cole, but I'm dreading saying that because how much I love Garrett Cole as a pitcher and as a person, and he's just a good Yankee. So, um, but that's just the answer. I was sitting there cause he's hurt, but they didn't lose anybody in free agency. I mean, Dominguez doesn't count because, um, he's a, he was a rookie and, He's a rookie technically this year too, but he he was already hurt. But um, Tweet Cole qualifies because he might be out for until Memorial Day. Um, all right, the team ceiling and floor ceiling first place in the division. Um, almost a hundred wins depending on when Cole comes back. Um, so I'm gonna say ninety seven wins is the ceiling in a first place, and dare I say a a return to the World Series for the first time in fifteen years. I think that's the ceiling, and the obviously a World Series championship. I think that is absolutely the ceiling if Hole comes back and Judge and Soto performs to the back of their baseball card. Stanton has a throwback year. Rizzo has a throwback year. Lemayu's back healthy. I feel like a lot has to break right for the Yanks, but um, that's the ceiling. I think the floor for the Yanks could be fourth, and I can't believe I'm saying that for my favorite baseball team. The case for them to finish fourth. Judge is hurt again. 
Cole isn't back until the All-Star break. He has a couple setbacks. Soto's under pressure in the contract year. Stanton's bad. Rizzo's washed. DJ's washed and hurt. The pitching outside of Cole and Cole's absence doesn't step up. The bullpen stinks. Um, Austin Wells doesn't show the promise that he showed when he was called up last year. Dominguez isn't back. The Rays are better than we expect. The Orioles run away with the division. And the Blue Jays finally live up to the hype. So that's the case for the Yankees finishing in fourth. I mean, did I say that there, there's a world where the O's finish in fourth too? But I, but I think I said third was their floor. But I do think because of the uh, injury factor, I think the the basement for the Yanks is fourth. I'm not going to say last because um, I just think the Red Sox are so bad. And I think there's a slight chance maybe the Rays finish in last, but, but very, very slight. But we'll get to the Rays when their time comes. So I think the Yankees have a high, high ceiling but a really low basement. As well, they're one of the, the few teams that I think um, has that situation. Um, all right, futures for the Yanks. Um, I obviously was going longer with the Yankees podcast, like I've been doing with all the good teams. The Dodgers, the Orioles was long. Even some of the teams I think are going to potentially be good, like the Reds and the Cubs. Um, the Braves one was long. All right, so the win the World Series, the New York Yankees are 9-1. to I think they should be double digits because of the Cole injury right now. But I think there's a chance you can get them at double-digit odds if they're 500 through April. Maybe they sit there at 12-1 to and maybe Cole coming back. That's when you grab them. You grab them if they're off to a slow start and they know they're getting Cole back. That's when you grab them. 9-1 to is way overvalued because of the injury of Cole. To win the AL, they're plus 450. ALCS, plus 220. To win the division, they're a plus 165 favorite. I do not think they should be the favorite because of the Cole injury. It should be the Baltimore Orioles over them. But if Cole comes back sooner than expected and Kyle Bradish is bad, I mean, maybe. Maybe, but let's face it. Vegas knows more than Madison, so um, hopefully Vegas is right here. And not Madison. I hope the Yankees win the division. Um, AL MVP, the favorites, Juan Soto at 5-1. to one. Aaron Judge is 7-1. to one. I think Aaron Judge deserves to be the favorite. And the reason why Juan Soto jumped Aaron Judge was because Aaron Judge got hurt in spring training. And Juan Soto was awesome in spring training. But spring training is irrelevant, as we know. And I think the wrong player and the wrong Yankee is favored to win AL MVP. Sorry, Juan Soto. Aaron Judge is a better player than you, and he deserves to be the AL MVP. Maybe I'm biased. Garrett Cole does not have a Cy Young number up yet because of the injury, but if he didn't get hurt, he would have been the favorite. He was probably like a 5-1 to one favorite or something absurd like that because it's Garrett Cole. Carlos Rodon's 40-1. to one. Where's my guy Cortez? Stroman, 100. 200-1. to one. That's absurd. Come on. He has the same odds as Clark freaking Schmidt. Give me a break. And I like Clark Schmidt too, but I like Nestor more. Rookie of the year, there's no Yankees on here. I mean, Volpe was one of the favorites. I sure. Austin Wells is 50 to 1. Clayton Beater's 80. Everson Pereira's 200. So there's a couple Yankees on there. Aaron Boone for manager of the year is 12 to 1. Same number as Houston's Joe Espada. Makes sense. Comeback player of the year, Carlos Rodon's is plus 650 favorite. Um, I disagree that he should be the favorite. Um, I think Mike Trout should have been the favorite. The reason why Brodon's favorite is because he's on the Yankees, and the Yankees should be good. And I'm saying should be. And that's why he's favored. Giancarlo Stanton's 20 to 1 for comeback. Um reliever of the year. Where's Clay Holmes? 11 to 1? Okay, that's not bad. A little overvalued, but not terrible. Best record for the Yankees. 17 to 1. The same as their division rival Baltimore Orioles. So you could argue um both those teams have value. Um 
the Yanks, you could argue, has some value because of no Cole. And then Cole comes back sooner than expected, and they win the division. They pay, they're better than the O's, and they're somehow better than the Dodgers and the and the Braves. The win total, 90 and a half. It was probably higher than that before Cole got hurt. But I kind of think 90's right because of the Cole injury. To win 100-plus games, they're plus 440. Um, not that they would have the worst record. I just want... There's not even odds for them for the worst record. Boston, 60-1, to one, but we... They weren't they 55 the one the other day? All right. To make the playoffs, it looks like they're over minus 100, minus 210. The no is plus 162. I remember we talked the no out last year, but I didn't have the balls to pick it because um, I'm a homer sometimes. Um, all right. So league leaders, home runs. Judge is a 7 to 1 favorite. Juan Soto's 14 to 1. Stanton's 100. Rizzo's 200. Um, strikeouts leader. Um, Rodon's 70. Stroman's 200. Stolen bases. Anthony Volpe. Where's he? 50 to 1. He steals a lot of bases. So that's why I wanted to throw that one out. Hits leader. I want to say Glaber Torres if he's on here because I think there's a chance he leads off. Um, Aaron Judge is 31 to 1. Soto's also 31 to 1. Glaber's 150 to 1. So that's pretty cool. Volpe's 200 to 1. RBI Judge is plus 950. Juan Soto is 12 to 1. I want to see Rizzo's number for this. Adley Regiment on Baltimore is 200 to 1, so that's kind of a fun one. Rizzo's 200, so is Glaber. Stanton is 200 also. And as saves leader, Clay Holmes is 16 to 1. All right. My favorite Yankees bet for the season. This is a hard one. Because there are so many ways I can go. But my favorite Yankee bet. I really like Austin Wells. I think that there's a chance he um, has a hot stretch and everybody gets excited. He's 50 to 1 for rookie of the year. I'm willing to uh to bet that. So that's my favorite Yankees bet. Austin Wells, 51 for rookie of the year. All right, now my bold prediction. All right, this is the longest of the 30. I mean, of course I have the longest of the 30 is my favorite team. Um All right, so my bold prediction for the Yankees this season. Get ready. Aaron Judge will break his season the single season home run record that he set two years ago. You heard it here first on the podcast. That's right. Aaron Judge will break his season single season home run record. Then I'm going to say that he does it in the last week of the season, like he broke the uh, the one a couple years ago, and an ESPN cuts in the college football games again, so Aaron Judge can break his own record. Ha <laughs> ha. All right, so that's it for this one. And next up will be the Oakland Athletics, which will be a much shorter podcast.